Hi, my name is Alex, and in this video I'm going to show you how to solve this scene from Factor.io, the level control. This is a great example for us to learn how to work with analog values and to use the PID controller. So let's go! Here we have our tank. It has a proportional fill valve, a capacitive level meter, a proportional discharge valve, and also a flow meter. All those sensors and actuators range from 0 to 10 volts. This process is controlled by this panel. It has a three non-retentive buttons, start to stop and reset, a potentiometer from 0 to 10 volts, a digital display for set point, and another one for the process value, PV. What is our objective? Create a PID controller capable of controlling the fuel valve to maintain the water level as close as possible to the set point, even if we create disturbances using the discharge valve. So let's go to Tia Portal. Let's create the OB30 and add the compact PID. We can't use the sensor's output directly into the PID. We need to convert those values so the PID can be able to understand them. For instance, the PID does not know that our level meter has a range from 0 to 10 volts. He does not know that 0 means 0 centimeters and 10 volts means 300 centimeters. So we need another block to put those values in scale before we enter them into the PID input. But before we start programming, the first thing I like to do is to update our tag table according to the sensors and actuators. First, we are going to insert the inputs. So the first one is start button. The data type is boolean. The address is I 0.0. The second one is reset button. Here's also a boolean variable and the address is I 0.1. Then we have the stop button also a boolean, and the address is I 0.2. Now the level meter. It's a real type, and the address is ID 30. Now the flow meter, also a real one. Its address is the next one available, so ID 34. The last sensor is the set point potentiometer, real value on ID 38. Okay, now let's go to the actuators. We have the start light boolean on Q 0.0 reset light boolean q 0.1 stop light boolean q 0.2 fill valve real kd 30 discharge valve also real kd 34 sp digital display it's a double integer and it's on kd 38 and finally pv's digital display also a double integer and it's on kd 42 now that our tag table is up to date we can start programming Let's create a new block. You can use an FC. Let's name it tank control. Now we need to translate those data before we use them into the PID. I mean, we know the range of our sensors and actuators. We know that 10 volts corresponds to 300 centimeters of water column, but the PID doesn't. We need to put those values in scale. And for this, we are going to use two blocks, norm x to normalize, make this range of values a linear function, and then the scale x to put those values into the actual process value scale. Let's start with the set point. The first network will be scale sp. Let's use the norm x. The input value will be of real type and the output value will be also a real type. The minimum value possible is 0.0, .0 volts. The input will be our set point potentiometer. And the maximum value of the potentiometer is 10 volts. The output will be MD 100. Let's rename it to set point buff. Now let's add the scale x. It will put the norm x values in scale, matching our process scale. In this case, the height of the water column in our tank. So the 0.0, .0 volts 
of our potentiometer corresponds to 0.0 cm of height. And the 10 volts of our potentiometer corresponds to the maximum value that our PV can reach, 300 cm. It receives set point buff and the output goes to the same set point buff. This digital display works only with double integer values, so we need to convert the value from real to a double integer. For this, we're going to use the convert block. The input will be set point buff, and the output is the SP display, KD38. Let's test it. The FC1 is loaded into the OB1, and now we can start the simulation to see if the potentiometer is working. When we adjust the potentiometer, a value ranging from 0 to 300 must be shown in this display. Now we need to do the same process again but this time with the level meter. From real to real, also from real to real. The minimal value is zero, and it will receive the level meter. And the maximum value is 10.0 volts. The output will be MD108, and we are going to call it by the name of level meter buff. Now the scale X. The minimum value is 0.0. .0. It will receive level meter buff. The max value is 300. The output is level meter buff. And now we must convert this value into a double integer type for us to use in this digital display PV here in our electric board. Let's test it. Our program is loaded. Let's manually fill the tank and see if the values will be displayed in here. I will stop the simulation when it reaches a hundred. Perfect! Now that we have both SP and PV ready, we can use them into our PID. Let's go here to the OB30. And here at set point, we must use a real type value. So must be the set point buff. Let's do the same for the input. But here we're going to use the level meter buff. I'm going to use the output PER, but feel free to use the normal output if you want to. As I told you before in my last video, this output ranges from 0 to 27,648. We can use a word to store it. MW116 will do it. Let's rename it to Output PID. Let's get back to our tank, Control, FC1, and add the Normax block. This block goes from 0 to 27,648 and receives Output PID. Let's store it on MD124 and call it output PID real. Now let's put them in scale. Scale X, the minimum value is zero. It will receive the output PID real. And the maximum value that our proportional fuel valve can have is 10.0 volts. The output is the same fuel valve. Now let's quickly set up the PID controller. 
I'm not going into details about setting up the PID because I have another video just for that. You can find it here in the card above or in the description down below. The controller type will be length and centimeters. The input we are using is input. The process value limit is 300 and it's done. Now let's start the commission. The set point will be 112 and start the commission. system is tuned. As you can see here, we have a big overshoot. In my last video, I comment some topics covering this subject and some actions that we can take to mitigate this kind of error. The PID's auto-tune algorithm isn't perfect, but sure can help us a lot. Well, this is it. Stay tuned because in my next video I'm going to show you how to create an HMI for this system. We are going to use data blocks instead of the PLC internal memory. Bye!